<laughs> They're so funny, look at them. We have a lot of Brock. Got 10 bags of all stock, so look at the building. Oh my goodness. Right into the back of the truck. We've got a pawn, Hector. Yeah, someone's ready. What is going on, crows? Welcome back to another video. Today, we've got a whole farm day and a lot of scaping to do. If you didn't watch this pond get built, it is our newest freshwater. Okay, that's a fake snake. That's a fake snake. Thought that was real. This is our newest pond yet, and it is absolutely insane. It's actually three feet into the ground and two feet out above the ground. The last couple videos, we have been working on this, and the only step we have left is to scape it, obviously fill it up with water, and then we'll be ready for the fish transfer video that's happening this week. So today we're going to scape this. This pond is huge though. I'm just trying to get in perspective how big it is. In the back here, our kittens are loving this pond, but in the back here we have all of our filtration set up. As you can see it goes to the, oh, oh, I don't want to fall. But a UV right here, obviously filter right here. The only things I need to do for this pond to be fully ready for fish is I need to put hooks on the side so we can put our net. This net is gonna go right above the water so it's a little less visible than it was inside the building. I need an attachment for our pumps. We're gonna figure that out. Let me take that with me. So we gotta get an adapter. And then after scaping, this pond is ready. It's ready to go. So we've got a couple things you gotta get today. Along with that, we're gonna do a big old farm update, of course. Along with that, I've gotta get feed for the animals and uh, we have a full farm day. So to those that love the vlogs, you're gonna love this video. Before we get started with anything today, which as you see, there's a lot to do, projects like this are not cheap. So here's a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by none other than API. If you can't tell, Big fan of API here in the building. API is actually celebrating 60 years in 2024. 60 years of straight developing and perfecting products for your aquariums and ponds. And now they've got a whole lot of stuff. Pretty much anything you'll need from test kits to water conditioners, fish medications, and even nutritional products. I've got quite the selection here. I'm just so I'm prepared for pretty much anything that can happen. You always want to be prepared. We've learned the hard way a couple times. You typically see me use these test kits and other stuff. Today we're going to talk a little bit about stress coat. I use this stuff literally all the time. You ever transferring fish? We literally just did that in one of our last videos. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? Whenever you think a fish could be put in a stressful situation, you use stress coat. Not only that, but it helps remove chlorine and chloramines, detoxifies heavy metals. This is proven to reduce fish stress. Helps replace the slime coat on the fish. It's the healing power of aloe vera. Stress coat is something you really do want to have around, though. All the information is right here on the front of the bottle, and of course, directions are on the back. Benefits, when to use, directions, tips. Now it's as simple as unscrewing the, the test space acknowledge right <laughs> this is the brand new bottle so we'll remove that like I said all the information is right in the back of the bottle here so I'm gonna need and put it right on into your aquarium your fish will thank you later now right now you can shop API products at Chewy the link is down below you can use my code Chewy API and that'll get you 10% off at checkout that is 10% off everything API link is in the description make sure to go check it out get yourself some stress coat test kits and obviously the many more different things that you might need in the future thanks again API for sponsoring today's video and the many others We've been working with them for years I love API Mwah! back to the video back to the video as you can see we have a lot of rock not not a crazy amount but enough to make a really cool scape and this rock is something I've never seen before they call it elephant skin for obvious reasons, right? Looks like elephant skin. A big shout out to Carib Sea. Carib Sea actually sent all this rock to us just like they did for the saltwater reef pond. They've been a big help to the channel and making all these crazy projects happen. But a lot of rock right here. We're gonna make a really cool scape out of all this. First things first though, we need to get all these into wheelbarrow like that. And then from wheelbarrow, to the pond. And once we get all the rock to the pond, we can start doing our scaping, but that's in just a little bit. First things first, we gotta go load up on feed. Got 10 bags of all stock, so 10 bags of feed, and then uh, some coastal hay for bedding for the pigs, and then some TNA for the goats. And an emu feed as well. This right here is emu, all that is for the pigs and goats. That good green stuff right there, that's TNA. God, it smells so good. Like, I would eat that if I was an animal. Like, I would actually chow down on that. And then this stuff right here is coastal. It's not really, like, good for pretty much anything, at least in my opinion, other than bedding for my pigs. And the pigs love it. They'll make their own home. I'll throw the whole bale in there. Boom. Bed full of goodies. Now, now we can head home. Oh, yeah. Fresh feed, buddies. Kun Kun, are you hungry? 
I know Hog's hungry. Hey. <laughs> I'm coming, buddy. I'm coming. There we go. Here you go, dude. Gosh, you're an animal. I mean, you actually are an animal. Got the coastal right here. This is the bedding. This is their little house right here. You just throw it in. Pull these strings off right here. And you kick it. Ugh. Now the pigs will make this bedding themselves. They'll do that, all that by themselves. Fill up with some water. Here you go, buddy. They love it. And these pigs have bedding, fresh water, and food for the morning. On to the next enclosure, across the way. Look how much shade is provided by these trees. It is just such a beautiful enclosure. I never could stop talking about how pretty this is. And all the pigs look very, very excited to see food this morning. Full bin, baby, full bin. And you pigs are nasty. Look at this, look. Onto the feed slab that's not even really a feed slab anymore. They covered it, well, not really, but they covered a lot of it in dirt. This right here, though, this water system is the best thing Hector has ever installed at my house in my entire life. Easily could just get rid of all the dirt that the pigs put inside these bins. And just like that, clean bin, filling up with agua. My little brother is out here working. I don't know if I've ever said that, but my little brother works for me here at the farm. Family business. My mom does all my back end finances and all the boring stuff Madre gets stuck with. And then my, my brother does a lot of the farm stuff with me. I need an extra hand a lot of the time, so it's good to have family around, people you can trust. Filling up though, and look how clean that water is. These pigs are gonna be in love. All right, guys. Now the goats, of course. You guys know the goat house. This is just one of the most epic enclosures we've ever built. This right here, the goats have loved so much and it saved me a lot from the heavy rains that we get out here. Where this farm is located does flood, of course. Uh, it used to just be a giant swamp. Florida is a giant swamp. So a lot of the stuff we built uh, on higher ground and on stilts and this thing has just been one of the best things I've ever built for the goats. I threw a little bit over here because Oscar's been a real big bum. He's been a, he's been a jerk. He's been just ramming his friends and these horns don't look like they'd be too pleasant to get rammed by, right? So I just threw a little bit on here for him and let him distract himself away from all the all his brothers and sisters. Hey, King, cake, take it easy there, bud. I'll make you go over there. I'm 23 years old with quite a lot of kids. There's flies everywhere, and this is my favorite part. Stay back! Get away from my pigs! And then the pigs will start rubbing on the sidewall because they really do like this stuff on them. Can't even get up, he's too big. Look at Lady May. Give me all that! <laughs> They're so funny, look at them. There you go, guys. Eat up. Yeet! Another bale right here, this is the blue string, which is TNA hay. This is what the goats eat. Oh, Oscar's already in the mix. If you guys are enjoying the farm content, feeding the animals, showing more of this process behind having over 25, 30 animals here at the farm, let me know in the comments. I typically don't film a lot of this. Sometimes I just do quick feedings and stuff, but I love every once in a while to give you guys like the full behind the scenes maintenance behind owning this many farm animals. Water's clean. Tommy's adding the hay into that one right there for their bedding. That's already done. They've got food and new TNA hay. The pigs over there are all good with new bedding as well. And we've got a lot of leftover, not only hay, but feed for uh, put inside the barn. Can't forget about the lunatics over here, Rick and Morty. Hey, Rick and Morty. There you go, guys. Eat up, guys. And girls or guys and I don't. They're both girls. I th are they both girls? Yeah. I, think, I think they're both they girls. Both from the humming noise, which the humming. I guess is... We looked it up online a little bit. We believe they're both girls, but. <laughs> Rick and Morty. Now what do you say we get started on this baby girl? All right, pit stop at the corn floor. 30% off, $400 for all that. How much for the whole thing? I don't think that would cover the whole pond though. Square feet per pallet, 155. Oh my goodness, it would. It's either this or something smaller version of that, like this right here. And we have secured the bag $400 later. Uh, we got tile. <laughs> oh. That was a long wait. I literally sat there for 30 minutes. As you can see, back to the backup camera. I've been using this a lot lately. The tile is in. Yeah, baby! Woo! Back home inside the pond, currently, uh, we have these massive tiles. A lot bigger than I expected to get, but this is gonna make it a lot easier. Less tiles we'll have to lay, the bigger they are. They might be a little heavier, but it's less tiles we have to lay. The very first tile going in. I'm trying to think which way I should do it. The main goal to put the white bottom is so we can see these fish a lot better than we normally would. It's not going to really sit level, but it'll definitely help. I have these little tiny screws, like a whole, whole thing of them. What I got to do now is just go up before the water's in the pond, go up underneath right here, and just drill them. Just like that. Just enough to where I could hook the net. 
because I want the net to look like it's coming out from underneath the wood, right? Instead of it on top of the wood like it is over there, or on the fiberglass. It'll be coming out from underneath the wood and you don't even notice it really. So I'm gonna have to do that around this entire pond, which is gonna take a second, so give me one minute. All around the pond is good to go. Look how it looks with the white tile. Looks good. Yeah, so it's really good I'm just gonna put them all along. Let's get that started. So we're just gonna literally lay these tiles on the ground. Um, I wish the floor was a little bit more even than it is, but like these little cracks once the water's filled up, you won't even notice that. This is again just to provide a white bottom for the pond. Hello, Shadow. Now I thought to myself, a good thing we could have done is gotten like sandbags and filled in the, the uneven spots with sand so that all these would lay flat. I don't have sand. We're gonna continue doing what we're doing and uh, once we're done, we'll really see how it looks. Yes, sir. Hector. What's up, amigo? Hey, um, is there any chance I can have you come work at the house tomorrow instead? What we have to do, amigo, okay? I tried to put tile at the bottom, but it's all just so uneven and it just, we went so we went so hard on the pond. It looks so great. I, I can't fathom not finishing the bottom of the pond correctly. I need to do only touch ups uh, in some areas, and then I can go to your house. All right. So I shall see you tomorrow then. Yeah, maybe I don't know after uh, one or after uh, two. You know. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate right. it, Hector. You're the best. No problem. All right. Bye bye. Hector's the man. He's out at one of the condos now, one of my condos working on renovating that so we can get some tenants in there. I do a little bit of real estate on the side. He has time, so tomorrow he's coming here. We're gonna make this look the right way. This is how it, how it should be done. So I made a little bit of a mistake. I just can't fathom leaving it with these cracks. I can't, it's gotta be perfect. It's gotta be perfect. If you've been watching long enough, you know my OCD is actually like insane. It's, it's nuts. We're gonna do the tile work tomorrow and then the scape tomorrow. I'll see you, I'll see you tomorrow. I got a whole thing of this rock. Right into the back of the truck. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh, what a disaster. All right, fellas. To do the tile at the bottom of this pond has been quite the journey. I could laugh about it at this point. It's it's laughable, it really is. So Hector came over, he told me I need to get pea gravel. We ain't got my pea gravel. Well, I forgot to plug the fifth wheel hole in the back of the bed. So, with that being said, the whole half a yard I had purchased the first time just drained out the bottom of the truck onto the road. It was all just coming out from the bottom of the truck. So, I then went back, I got another yard of gravel, and I covered the hole. Got back to the house with the gravel in the back of the truck, correct? Yes, it was fantastic. I go to back up the truck. I'm not paying attention. I back the truck up and my hitch hits the entire stack of somehow, why are the tiles leaned up right there? I don't know why. Hits the stack of tiles and cracks through pretty much all of the tile that were on clearance that I cannot get any more of. Um, so I think I have, yeah, there's not a single one. There's not a single one that's not cracked. I didn't think of that either. Oh my God, I need to go inside. I need to stop. I need to just, I need to go inside. Hector, we're not doing the tile. Like this is, yeah. the gravel looks good. We just put the gravel in, we flattened it out. I actually did a little thicker of a layer because I got a yard and I didn't want to waste any. And it's the exact same color as the tile. It's the exact same color. I mean, there's, there's just no point for us to go lay this on top of that when it's gonna provide the same exact thing, which is making a white bottom. I can't believe I didn't think of this because honestly, that is $77. Like my entire bed full is $77 and that tile was like 500 and I'm not even using it. They're putting it into the barn right now. I can't return it because it was a clearance buy. Um, I was trying to save money by buying clearance. Now I ended up just, things happen though and that's just part of the project it's a little extra budget there um thankfully today's video is sponsored so you know we had a little bit of budget to work with to make a project like this which is awesome i backed into the remaining of our tile anyway so we cracked through a lot of them it's been a it's been it's been quite the day to say the very least caferos we still got escape um we're gonna do some really cool escaping this afternoon uh, we got a lot of rock right here but they also sent me this, and I'm just now opening it. I wanted to grab the camera. It is called a Dragon Arch, 18 inch. Carib C sent over these. And I wanna see what we're rocking with. <laughs> no pun intended. Wow, that's epic. 
dragon arch. So it's a, literally, it's dragon stone, and they just built an arch out of it. Very, very unique. That is incredible. That's very, very unique. Definitely different, and I cannot wait to get all this into the pond. Do you like all the action? There's always something going on, isn't there? She's tired, she's laying on the patio. It looks really good. Like, it literally looks amazing. We flattened it all out. Now, I will say, this is gonna be a lot more natural as well than the tile would have been. Regardless of the fact, the bottom's now white. And not only that, Hector's got a bunch of, if you could look in the back of his truck, 12 foot four by fours, because we're putting the shade cover up. If you follow me on Snapchat, you saw what we just did here. Look at the building. Oh my goodness. I figured we were getting to pool, so we might as well have a little bit of fun. Although the fun turned into kind of a mess. I'm gonna have to power wash the building now. Kids being kids, right? Hey, Hector filmed it. I'll give it to that. Hector, you filmed it. You're part of the, you're part of the trouble. You're still a kid at heart. My boss. <laughs> oh, wifey's calling. <laughs> All right, so, so far what I've got scape-wise are these two caves right here. Looks really, really cool. Once I foam them in, they'll be locked and good to go. Now, all the elephant stone I have over here, the elephant skin stone, I'm gonna utilize this in some which way possible. It's very hard rock to kind of build a taller uh, scape out of. But regardless, they just need something to go in and out of. I'm gonna continue to kind of do something similar to this along the whole entire back here. And that way they have structure in the back. And then uh, maybe even stack it up on the wall or something like that. Could be really cool. So a couple different options, roll the time lapse. Hector is on to pole number two. That's the first one right there, all the way up. We're gonna paint those black and then put this shade cover over the entire pond, which is 12 by 12. It's gonna look really nice, provide a lot of shade on those sunny days. Over here, we, there, I physically sat, I'm sweating, as you can see. I have sat here for an hour at least, trying to figure out how to stack these. It's impossible, so the best bet to create any sort of structure with this elephant skin rock, at least, is gonna be to just make it like the floor cover out of these rocks. I stacked them as good as they could get pretty much. And throughout that there is caves like this one over here. And then of course on the back side as well there's another one. A lot of these fish are bigger anyway and if they really did want a cave there's two arches here on this side that they can go and sit under. A lot of the times these fish don't even sit in any structure but there's another cave over on this back end right here as well. Some people may say, oh, you just threw the rock on the, f well, guess what? I like it. It looks good. And I really do want these fish to be out and about and uh, they've got some places to hide if they did really want to. It's a big, big pond with a lot of room for these fish. Now we're gonna use this foam right here, put everything together. And the shade cover is now going on. And then we can paint these poles black, but the shade cover is now going on. Once this foam dries, just like we did in the saltwater pond, I'll cut all the foam back, you won't even notice it. We've got a pond. We've got a pond, Hector. Yeah, it's almost ready. That right there is like 10 times better already. Especially when the sun is bright and out during the summer, you don't want this to just be baking in the sun. Now that makes the world of a difference. Take a look at the black pole next to one of those wooden ones. Hector, how do you do so good at everything you do, man? Man, we always try to do good job. Oh, I know. I could tell, man. Yeah, we try. Golly, what is going on on my phone here? Too Gotta be in a group chat. Yeah, man. I'm in a group chat. Too many senoritas. Yeah. I wish, man. <laughs> the senoritas know you single now. No, I don't think. I don't even think YouTube knows. <laughs> <laughs> Hector and I have been uh, just hustling lately between the condos and all these crazy pond projects. We have been nonstop. He's literally full time for me pretty much at this point. Right, Hector? Oh, yes. I mean, every single day, every day of the week, all day. Sometimes it takes a Sunday off to have some energy drinks with his friends and family. Otherwise, this man's hustling. He's grinding 24 seven uh, along with me. It's a great team we have here. And as you can see, we create some of the craziest ponds on the internet. And just like that, all the poles are black. You walk right up to the pond, you got the cover, you've got all those poles that are now, like I said, the eye doesn't really catch that black, so it looks like this is just floating. You come straight down, of course, the beautiful open pond. It's massive. 
It is so big. The freshwater fish will be going into here very, very soon. Just a matter of time. Probably in one of the next videos. Not Maybe not the next, maybe the next. Very soon. Make sure you're subscribed down below. It's totally free. Hit the subscribe button. Smash that like button. Rate this pond 1 to 10 in the comments down below for me. Big shout out to Hector. They came out, helped me out really big. Uh, I needed the help. I had a long day. Hector. Así, amigo. Eric. Thank you. Looks really good. Looks amazing. That's a wrap for today. We'll see you right back here in the very next video, probably transferring monster fish into this right here. Peace out.